Alright, welcome back to another installment of How to Do Everything. The new YouTube series that shows you how to do everything from running wires to digging and everything in between. Today we'll be uh, doing actually a quite long job here running a Cat5 Ethernet cable between two different buildings. And a uh, few things you need to know for this, just a few little facts. Like, first of all, the big thing is the difference in networks. The network, chances are you're running right now, is going to be it's going to be what's called a LAN network, which is any network contained within uh, one building. Now that you throw into the mix, it's a separate building, and you have what's called a MAN network. M A N. And uh, let's see, I'm not sure what the M stood for. I think it was like Metropolitan or something like that. I don't know, maybe somebody can post it. Well, I'll put it into the ending of the video or something. So when you add in two buildings, it's going to be a man network. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your modem or your DSL box or whatever service you're using is going to be able to actually handle the uh, strain of the network because you're not just connecting two computers most of the time you're connecting two homes with multiple computers or two office buildings with multiple computers right. so let's see uh, big thing is now then the well, best way I can figure out how to do this is just give it a try like what's it going to hurt you can always return the cables on most sites like uh, my own bitenight.com has a uh, money back warranty on it okay so once you figured out that your box or modem whatever you have is going to be able to handle the strain of the network what you're then going to want to do is determine what type of cable you're going to want to use for this specific run it was originally a 300 foot run using cat 5v cables well, we ran into some unexpected problems here and uh, went up to a 400 run. Now, cables have already been purchased. Maximum run recommended for a Cat 5e cable is 353 feet. That's going to be uh, where you get your most performance from. So, this will affect performance a bit. Now, then, uh, Cat5 and Cat5e have the same recommended uh, run length, but the minimum I would uh, do is a Cat5e. Cat6 are always good, higher speeds, more shielding, and uh, longer runs, but they also are more expensive. So it just depends. And uh, Cat7, you're just really going into overkill there fiber optics overkill this ain't a thousand mile run or anything like that you don't need a big two hundred dollar rolls of cable don't need all that now then another thing to determine is uh, how the cables are going to be bought if you're going to buy a uh, just all in one cable such as a three hundred foot cable for a three hundred foot run or if you're going to go the cheaper route and buy uh, 300 foot cables now if you do the 300 foot cables there you got even more choices you can either go with a coupler that's more recommended if you have a conduit to run the cable into and a conduit would be considered in the uh, little pipe or anything like that to run the cable into to protect it from dirt grime and uh, water of course if not, then what you would want to do is actually connect the cables physically through the wiring. I've actually got a video posted here on how to uh, do that. And uh, another thing to consider is where's your cable going to be? You don't want to put it anywhere near any septic tanks, pipelines of any sort, wires, especially telecommunication and electrical wires. Electrical wires are self-explanatory. They'll fry you. 
telecommunication wires. You now then we're talking telephone cables, all that. And uh, those do cause interference with these cables. The specific one we're using today is going to be a unshielded, untwisted pair cable. UTP. Well, no, I got that wrong. It was a unshielded, twisted pair cable. And what that means is this cable isn't particularly rated for uh, underground use. Another thing to be careful of is just because it says premium on it doesn't mean it's rated for underground use. But depending on your climate, where the cable was placed and such, the cables can last, uh, these UTPs can last up to about six years. So that's uh, going to be a good way to go. If you're looking for a more reliable, more long lasting connection, or if you're in a uh, more extreme climate, like extreme cold or extreme heat, then you're going to want to go with a cable that's actually rated for underground use. Now then another thing to uh, think of is where is the connection going to be in the two buildings? Your main building is going to have your modem or your box and you're going to run a wire from there. Now the second building is going to have to have some kind of point where it can access the wire. It's not as simple as just having a wire on a wall. Now you can either go uh, just a low hole up in the floor put the wire through and just hook up a computer or a router switch whatever or you can actually go with a uh, faceplate and keystone combination let me see if I can find one around here This would be a keystone jack here. Cat 5E also works for Cat 5 cables. Bought off of uh, bitenight.com, my own uh, web store. Now, then, these things are very good. This is specifically a toolless one, meaning you do not need any tools to do it. And it doesn't require a special wire, just a normal Cat5 or Cat5e cable. And I've actually got a video on how to wire this specific jack. Now what you do is you would have to, uh, depending on what type of wall you have, you may need a receptacle. Or uh, you could get away with just a hole, a keystone, wire, and a faceplate. But chances are you will need a, a wall receptacle. And what that is is just the blue box. If you've ever been into someone's garage or uh, somewhere like that and seen a blue box with an outlet in it, that blue box is called a receptacle. Now and there's really two different types. A stud receptacle, which is the ones with the nails in the side so that they can easily be hammered into studs. That's only good for an area that is not covered by a wall. So that'd be good for if you're running a network to your garage or something. But now then, for a home or office building use, you're going to need a uh, wall receptacle. I'm not sure what they're actually called. Little flaps on it will hold it into place. But if you're lucky, you may not even need one. You may just be able to get away with cutting a small hole in the wall, running your wire up through wherever you're running it from into the uh, keystone and uh, plug it into your faceplate screwed in you may be lucky now then another thing to consider is where is the wire going to come from <clears throat> the specific house we'll be working on today is just very bad house for a uh, wiring internet through real uh, tile floor don't want to drill through that and the access to the crawl space to the wall is actually covered now then we could go through the porch and into the wall or up and through the attic but these ways would add more length onto the wire we need it which therefore is more costly in itself so there's just several ways to do it you may have to get a little creative but uh... next part we'll actually start working on this 
And uh, I think that's just about all the choices you would need to make. And everything that you would need to buy would be listed here on BiteNight.com. For those of you watching this on YouTube, I will post a link in the description. And all of these how-to videos are placed on BiteNight.com as well. Now then be sure to comment on new ideas on what to do for the series. Or if you have a question, feel free to comment. Send an email to uh, bitenight.com shift at gmail.com. Alright. Now just remember to comment, give new ideas, subscribe to the series, and check out the new website.